Moses with our thoughts in prayer and ask the good Lord to forgive us of all our uh, transgressions during the course of the day and create in us a new heart so we'll be able to worship him today. Let's pray that God. Today's worship unto the Lord's prayer that the good Lord will start with us and assist us. Also, commit those on their way here. Let us know the gracious of the Lord to be saved and bring them to us. We thank you for our most gracious Father for the wonderful 
last week we were looking at the the role or the responsibilities of the man in a Christian home. Um, we said that the man was supposed to provide leadership. The man was supposed to love the wife, right? Mm -hmm. And the last one that we may not, we are not going to talk about is to treat her with consideration. There's a lot in that concept. Treating her with consideration. Um, but we'll come back to it. Uh, we've had to change, not change, but rush on because I understand um, this week will be the last for some some of our um, some of people. And we have spent a lot of time talking about the men, the men, and we we, we have not broached the subject of the the wives and the women yet. And so before they leave we should broach that subject. And so we, today we are going to talk about the, the, the portrait of the wife of the Christian home, the kind of wife that is able to create a Christian home. But before <coughs> then, let's spend and um, I think we started around the very spend about 10 minutes. Last week I said we would, we would discuss. This is um, a discussion. Um, it's not meant to be a, a, a battle of the sexes, but let's talk about between loving and submission. Which one is most the most difficult? Muye dia 10 minutes ago before. We cut up the dust. So the floor is now open. Um, what do you think? Between loving, because the man is supposed to love the wife. Why did God asked the man to love and not the woman to love their husband. Well, you pointed out in titles that uh, older women are supposed to teach, but let, let's focus on efficiency here, okay? Um, why is it that the man is supposed to love the wife and the woman is supposed to submit to the husband? Why not the other way around? And which one is, the, the, the question is, which one is the most difficult? It depends on the gender. The gender. Because I, I think that's why God says so. Because I think God knew that it would be difficult for the man to love and it would be difficult for the woman to submit. That's why he caught him. Even now, um, when uh, they sing and he was giving his judgment, he said, For the woman, the desire will be to love the husband, but that desire will be for the man. Mm -hmm. So we suggest that it will be difficult for the woman to submit because the woman would like to be the head would like to lead and instead of leading she's supposed to submit mm -hmm. so i think that would be difficult for the woman that's why the woman was forced to submit and it would be difficult for the man to also love that's why it was also forced to yes we know it's not easy but which one among them which one is the most so difficult to, to the man love is very difficult as compared to submit. i don't think so women woman, think that loving is difficult as compared so to, to the woman loving is easier <laughs> i know so that, that is so they, they wouldn't find it difficult to love, but find it difficult to submit. But the man wouldn't find it difficult to submit, but find it difficult to love. I'm, I'm, I know. So you speak as a man, okay? You, as, yes, a man, so you... as a man, loving is difficult. Uh -huh. difficult Why do you think it is difficult? God says so. <laughs> ah. God says so. I say his laws are not bad in So God knows that loving is not bad. But in your own experience, why do you think so? Yeah, you know, God loves us, the church as his people, irrespective of what we do. We do wrong sometimes, but he's so compassionate, he still loves us. And I think that is very good. Looking into somebody's eyes and the person, and you are supposed to love the person. Mm -hmm. And the person is messing up yet, you are still supposed to love the person unconditionally and always that. So you think loving is much more difficult than submitting? From my point of view. I know, you can only speak from your point of view. In your head? Yes, Randy. I think I agree with what you said earlier. You said loving is because of the requirements of love. As a society, like, 
So he is bringing up a point. Love appears to be quite, uh, it comes naturally from females. So why did God not ask the females to love? Since it comes naturally to them, and the men to do something else. Which one is more difficult? Loving or submitting? I'm going to 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 Submission is much, 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 much difficult, but much, much accountable. Last time here, it's easier when you, the woman, loves the husband. But what if he does not love the man? Yes, please. Uh, from Nana Ekiajima, she said submission is more difficult than love. And then from Adra Tinkwan, she said submitting to a man without a vision is very difficult. Submitting to a man without a vision is not complicated. So submitting to a man without love is difficult. Submitting to a man without a vision is difficult. But I tell you, okay. Now, let me, you know I'm a man. I've never been a woman before. And so uh, I, let me declare my my bias. But I'll try to be as 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 um, as objective as possible. Uh, 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 um, go on. what do you think? Submission is difficult. Why? You are losing what? Which battle? <laughs> the battle for superiority. <laughs> Something like that. And some of you can move too. You know, like these are unconscious stuff that plays out in, in a marital relationship. So that in the situation there will be a lot of conflict in the home. You don't understand, but the things are not as pronounced as these are unconscious things. Um, the ladies are saying it's it's easy to submit a certain kind of man when he loves you. We should also know that it's easy to love a certain kind of woman. Okay? Um, there are some women who find the idea of submission as, as an abuse, as, as um, some something. And so they come into a relationship with the with the view to to fight for their rights, right? And so it becomes a battle in the home. And so let's let's note all these things. Any other point before we go on? I go here. Josie, which one is more difficult? Submission or loving? Submission is more difficult. Why? I just give it, I just respect the person. And on the other side, I believe if you love me, 
we special a kind unit that took not only one week. So some men think that uh, if the Bible says something, they don't want to. But I think if you love the person, naturally the person will love. You love the person, naturally the person will want to love. Is it always as easy as you guys are describing? Yes, yes. It's well, always as easy as this. Jimmy, who is out? Well, I'm guessing there are some individual differences. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are there are some people who come from Beijing conference out, right? <laughs> women women empowerment out. So no matter how much you, you love them, there is no way they are going to, because submission is and now let me say this. You know we all choose our spouses based on certain things. Certain women choose spouses because they don't want to submit to them. You get it? Please come again. Certain women choose spouses because they will think for this spouse, I can control, I can, you know that. And so submission does not come naturally to every woman. And so I just want us to be conscious. Sometimes, what to say, you think that it, 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 it comes naturally to me. But when you get into the soup, I want to be the real you. Sometimes we discover ourselves more when we get married. So let's be conscious of that. But now I want to make my point. Mama. Yeah, yeah, we are tempted to, to elevate submission about, above love and love above submission. We should stop. We must realize that all of them are equally difficult. Both of them require a lot of work and commitment to making it work. So the, the ladies will tend to think that submission is difficult. Yeah. It is very difficult to love one woman. Very difficult. <laughs> As my beginning. Huh? Why why you my mother? Share. What do you do? I have no sad now. No can I me I know that submission is difficult. But do not try to superimpose it over love it. And that comes out. Share. That's what you ladies should know. Momo V is there. Loving is there. Now, let's go back. Yes. One, well, you didn't get your uh -huh. so, but I think loving is both sides. It's not just one person. We even have to do the loving to make it that complete. But the submission is just one, one sided and that's what makes it more difficult than the other. That's what I think. I think you you ladies It's not one sided. I'm also submitting to God. And once I submit to God, I'll submit to you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also. I just want to convince someone, um, especially my dear ladies, who are on the other side. Um, of the political divide. <laughs> um, you know, in God's wisdom, um, he put a man in charge of certain responsibilities in a certain category. That is the leadership. And when you look at the categories of our uh, characteristics of love, it all goes to one point. That is the leader. And for the leader to work effectively, it needs that stability part, that is the woman, to complement it. Mm -hmm. So without leading or loving, there cannot be submission. Therefore, the love supersedes the submission. What you are saying is the ideal, okay? But human beings are less than the ideal. Yeah. But ladies, do you know that in the past, to marry a wife, were not required to love the woman. Did you know that? Did you know that? Tell us, did you know that? Huh? In our society? Yes. Before, before Christianity, a man could marry a woman without the requirement of loving her. This means a man can marry a wife and the, the responsibility of the wife would be to bear legitimate kids. You are my wife, and the whole duty is to bear me legitimate kids. Aside you, I can have a woman for sexual pleasure. 
I can have a woman that follows me out to social gatherings. I can have a lot of them. So they are on the set. Just bear me legitimate children. There is no affection, there is no um, there is no love was not an expectation for marriage. And I tell you, Senior is to Suma. I tell you, most men will love this arrangement. True or false? You see, and I'm sure more more ladies will have more for ice cream, more for a biscuit, more for different shades and colors. And we are not so different from you when it comes to our um, our dealing with with the with the with the feminine. Thank you, now multiple colors. I was in your Different colors, no? <laughs> let's, let's talk about the reality. And ladies, there are some ladies who would also want to, you know, have shades. But when it comes, you, you like something you like to be your own. You don't want to share. But yeah, sharing is good. <laughs> We must understand by nature we want to explore. Yeah, yeah but uh, we are kind. Uh -huh. We are well kind. <laughs> we want to. And so when when the Christian ethics ethic imposes upon us the responsibility to love one woman, irrespective of how you become, uh, when is a you you change. <laughs> but irrespective of how you wish, we are supposed to value you. You, your as Solomon would say, we should be content with whatever um, um, package of breast you bring to the plate. Another thing, we are supposed to be content, and it doesn't come naturally to us. And so we should you we should not downplay that counter intuitive thing expectation of men it's it's it requires a lot of work and so it becomes even more difficult when you try to think that all that we are trying to do guys am i speaking <laughs> and again Guys, we should also stop thinking that submission is it's easy. It is not. You see, we are marrying ladies of a different generation. You see, in the past, you, ladies relied on their men for their economy. You get it. And so once the person provided for you, they are okay. But it is not the same today. They have their own ambitions, and most of the case, the, 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 the ladies are smarter, wiser than the, the, the guys they end up marrying. And here you are, with all the wisdom you think you have, you are supposed to submit, subordinate your mission to the mission of the man. It is not easy. But I, if, if, just for those of you who who work under some bosses, for you to feel the way women feel, imagine how women tell boss in terms of organization, who's not your boss, don't you be kind with them. Sometimes we now go back and ask them where they're called. That is how they feel. And so I think we should stop this battle and all of us should begin to appreciate that the, the responsibility placed on us is not easy. All of them require a lot of commitment and dedication. When we begin to sort of um, diminish the value, the, the, the expectation, it doesn't help. So loving is not easy. In the same way, submission is not easy. All of them require. Moses, you are alluding to God, Jesus, having to love the church. And look at us the way we are. We didn't even when he doesn't want to. You think it's easy? That 
emotional kind of instability. You want the real emotion you want to express is anger, disgust. But I'm supposed to love you, right? You think it's easy? And so, and the guys, it's not easy to submit. It's not easy at all. So let's let's stop this 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 thing of trying to and uh, and the cat. Oh, submission here, then. Oh, oh, oh. Now, now, also we are coming there. Saying and brings to mind what we discussed earlier when we were talking about the kinds of marriage there. So we had one that was a contract and covenant kind of stuff. And I I call the next question. Whatever you receive as a man, don't don't see it as a, a right, but see it as a, being given to you by grace. So if a woman should submit to me, I should see it as God has been gracious to me. Hey. And she should, she should also see it as a grace that has been bestowed on her that I'm loving her. Mm -hmm. In that case, we may not have this feeling that mine is not equal than yours. Either way, we all receive it by grace. Yes. So if that's the case, then we are, if we are receiving by grace, then I want to give my all to the person. The person who tried this on her and this on her best also give his on her all to me. Yes. But we, there's always the the, the tendency for one to want to elevate his functions above the other. Let us stop it. Let us, it's, it's, it doesn't help. It, it makes the other feel that me, what I need to bring is unimportant. And that is, these are some of the things that lead to marital, uh, extramarital affairs. The man is trying all he can to, to love you. But you think, oh, me, I'm submitting too much. So then you will find somebody elsewhere. And that is why these, um, this, this papano phenomenon <laughs> is increasing. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 And this one is from NST Nabwajo too. Mm -hmm. She says, yeah, I think in the olden days, because the women were given everything by their husbands, they had no choice and became used to it. It was also difficult for them. It was also difficult for them. Oh, um, they did not know any better, so they were content. Mona and say, right to me and they have a mapus for me and they And she also says that we, sh we need to be conscious and deliberate about being submissive. Wife, as a man, don't take it for granted. There are some people who are searching for one, they don't, they don't get it. If you have a loving husband, please um, don't and uh, uh, And I think marriage grows when, when submission is available and when love is also functional. If and if you, if you thought about it, if you know what a man needs in a marital relationship, that, why do we get married? Last year. Huh? Last year. Uh -huh. A certain lady came to me, asked me, so she kept telling me that my husband says I you come and ask me why men get married. Uh -huh. I remember because the ladies do not get it that we marry because of sex. They don't. Essentially, that as one well, we can be what? Part as one we can be. Sometimes we embellish it. We want to have legitimate sex, and have sex and not and not sin against God, and sometimes. The ladies, they don't get it. So, and when it is repeated, they point. And sometimes, well, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Ladies, it's, it's, if you want, say, I'm going to worry about it. You can do it, but I said, it's okay. But if you want to get married and enjoy your marriage, 
know yeah, what is smarter than all of us. You have to know, no matter how smart you become, you can never be God. He knows why. He, he said he, he imposed these, these responsibilities on each one of us. I think that we have gone about the 10 minutes. Let's move on. Let's talk about the portrait of the wife of the Christian home. We said that, yes. Yes. Depends on the skill of, of the leader, the, the man of the house. If the man is very skilled, um, you would submit without even knowing that you are submitting. Um, last week I tried to. Uh, submission comes from two words sub and mission. Okay, so um, the man is there leader and he has a mission for the house. You are also a human being. You also have your mission. But when you are submitting, means you are subord subordinating your mission to the mission of the house. You get it? And so you begin to, to follow the mission of the man. Whilst if he is smart, he is also trying to help you accomplish your personal mission. And so in a functional home, Although the man's vision prevails, but eventually the woman also ends up achieving her, her mission. You get it? Yes. So, so in the case when we realize he's deviating from the mission that's confirmed, we've all agreed to take. Do you like I don't know how to take it? I think you do. You know, uh, Delilah was able to use love to get something something to do something stupid. You get it? Uh, Eve got an apple and got so if if we have a smart woman, a wise woman, you have you can always use love, submission to get your husband to back on the on the on the mission. It, it, yeah, naturally men we miss our way. If not, if that's not the case, how would we? Uh, uh, release over 200 million uh, spares just to fertilize one egg. It, it is natural. It, it, that is how we are. We naturally lose our way and we need the woman's help to give us a sense of direction. And so, you see, if a woman is good and smart, he would only allow, get the man to feel that he's in control, but she will be the person dictating the place. It's all about skill and finesse and godliness. That's all. But what men hate is a battle. So if if you want a fight, they will give you a fight. We are we are we are we are um, we are oh, 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 We we just like one thing about us is our ego. I don't know where that came from, but we are all egoistic in some ways. So, you, if you want peace, don't stare the ego. It's not so good, but that's how we are. You get it? And so, I think a smart woman will always get the husband to do what he or she, what she wants, without even knowing. Alright, let's move on. Carry more. The portrait of the wife, you see, of the wife in a Christian home. As we have said, having a Christian home is not automatic. And yet, 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 and and you want a Christian book, you should be careful that the guy you settle down with. You get it? And if you are a man, a male, and you want a Christian book, you should also be careful the kind of female you settle down with. So, what we are, I think we have already discussed the, the man in the Christian book. So let, now let's look at the wife. What kind of wife? What kind of personality? I, I think I omitted one word. Personality traits. Sorry. What kind of personality?
personality would should a, a, a female possess in order uh, for a Christian home to be kept uh, to be possible. All right, and so uh, I'm using some characters in scripture as the basis for what we are doing in the just like I did for, for the males. And the first thing, the furthest personality portrait I, I want to show is from Eve. Eve before the fall. And let me preface say that, say that before the fall. God's original intent for bringing Eve into the garden was what? Huh? To be a help need, right? A help need for the for the male. And so a Christian home becomes possible and probable if the woman is like Eve before the fall, that she is the perfect help need for the man. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, let's read that passage. Let's read Adam's exclamation at the sight of Eve. Yes, me. Where is your Bible? What may be? Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Uh -huh. And the man said, uh -huh. This is now full of my blood. Uh, uh, can you send me a woman, Jennifer? <laughs> you get it. Sometimes you read Bible with. Just imagine. <laughs> Ah, and, and before you go and propose, you know that you you go through some mental stuff. So enter that spirit <laughs> and use that to read. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I said, I said, now this is the bone. Of, that's what I'm imagining he's saying. This is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Yes, I know. What does Adam say? In other words, physically, spiritually, emotionally, Adam realized that maybe on face value, before the fall, the woman God had given him would be his helpmate in every domain, every facet of his life. Hence the exclamation, yes. You can say that. You can say that. We are saying this because we know how the story ends. And that is not the intention of God for, for that to happen. Let us remember. And we don't marry a female hoping that she will become a devil in our home, do we? We don't. And so, but the idea of a help me is this. This does not make the woman inferior to the man, right? What it means is this. The woman becomes on earth what God is to the man from heaven. God helps us. Um, Psalm 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present, an ever-present, oh, Munka Samuel, an ever-present, so God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is an ever present what? Help in times of trouble. And so the woman functions as a God, as God in the life of the man. She provides help. And does not feel inferior in doing so. You see, God helps us, right? He supports us. He gives us strength. But he is invisible. At least in the physical sense. And he is not, he is not perturbed that he is helping us and pushing us and we are getting somewhere. And sometimes we don't even 
give him the regard, right? And he does not help him. But eventually, he knows his, we are heads. So, the kind of a wife that is able to create a Christian home is the one that is comfortable being a helpmate without feeling inferior. Are you that kind of woman? Are you that kind of lady? So she's like if before the fall. And usually when men are speaking about such women, they use the language of Adam. Mere, se menyana, mere metine so am I there? I'm sorry. I know sometimes you don't you you when men are saying this on before the camera, you cannot trust it. But some people say it and mean it because that is how their their wives have fun, function in their life. Whatever they have become, whatever they have been able to achieve, it is because of this woman they marry. So indeed, she becomes the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh. The wife of the Christian home is the help me in every sense of the word. Two. Like Sarah, the wife of a Christian home must not think of submission as a human right abuse. So the wife of a Christian home is comfortable with the idea of what? The submission. Like Sarah. Let's read first Peter chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. But we need so much time, so read as in doors so we can. trusted in God, mm -hmm. also adorn themselves being submissive to their husbands. Six, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, mm -hmm. calling him Lord, mm -hmm. whose daughters you are with. You are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Amen. Amen. If you, so, a guy, if you are looking for a woman to marry, there are two types. Daughters of Eve and daughters of Sarah. Make sure you know which house to go into. You see, daughters of Eve, over time, want to get in front and speak to the devil and take the lead in confronting whatever. But daughters of Sarah are comfortable referring to their husband. You see, when I was younger, woman, I'm not from Mira. And I can say, I know, um, maybe I'll sometimes refer to you as my Mira boy. I know of Vivian, but for some modern women, the idea of referring to their husbands as Mira <laughs> smacks of the, the slave trade deal. So forget it. I'm not saying that if you if you don't call your husband that way, it doesn't mean you don't submit. But there are some women that submission comes natural to. Others forget. As my wife would say, forget. So what kind of woman is able to build a Christian home? A daughter of Sarah, who is able to wear the, the necklace of submission without feeling like a slave. So guys, but it's difficult to see. When you are dating, they will do all manner of things. Say all manner of things. Or the lines is maybe an hour. It is not meant to scare you. It is meant to, for you to go deeper in yourself. So like Sarah, she must not think of submission as a human right 
abuse. Like Rebecca, she must be modest, industrious, and hospitable. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15 to 20. Let's read. We know the story of Eliezer when he was commissioned by um, Abraham to go to water. And not that, must also offer to give water to my to my so let's read Genesis chapter 24 verse 15 to 20 or 21 and, and, and as you may notice Rebecca was like this before he married Isaac before turning into the, the chief instigator in their home. So let us know. Ah, some of you can do that in one. Papa, no, if you ask, eh? What's that? Ojo, sit down. Yeah. Who is reading? She quickly emptied her 24 verse 20. Verse 15, let's start from verse 15. And it happened, mm -hmm. before he had finished speaking, mm -hmm. that behold, Rebecca, who was born to Bethel, son of Milka, mm -hmm. the wife of Nabal, mm -hmm. Abraham's brother. You, you know you have a very strong voice, you know that. Good. Came out with her picture on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Now the young woman... She came with her picture, picture wow. on her shoulder. She said, she said, she said, <laughs> so that is what Rebecca was doing. She was going to the well to fetch what? This speaks to her industry. She was a hard-working woman, not giving to sleep when it's morning. She was going to bed with the God. Now, the young woman was very beautiful. The young woman was very beautiful. To behold. To behold. She had aesthetic value. She was pleasing to the eyes. You know, when you looked at her, you didn't have to close your eyes. Be more what? When you look at them, you have to be quick. <laughs> and, and, and change location. I'm not saying, you know, you know we have very... <laughs> Rebecca was not only industrious, she was, usually you get the opposite. The beautiful ones want to sit at home and, and cool off their milk. They don't go anywhere. But she was beautiful, and industrious at the same time. Just like T Pinky. She bakes burgers, makes money. So if you want an industrious woman, we have one here. I, I know most of you are just women. Doesn't mean I'm being biased, right? Uh -huh. A virgin. No. She was also a modest woman, a virgin. How can a pretty woman in the 21st century be a virgin? But she she was a virgin. Uh, in in Lucky Dubay's words, a beautiful woman is another man's prayer, right? Yeah. So if you have, I mean, sometimes the man is a man who is a man who is a so she was industrious, she was also modest. She valued the fact that she needed to keep herself. She was a very bad. This is a very, well, I know that we are, we may be cynical, but in some, in the case of Christ, there are some females with this um, killer combination, right? Industrious, modest, and let's finish with the last thing. Virgin, no man had known her. Now, within one common eye, and not you. The person might be. Oh, teaching. 
and she went down to the well, mm -hmm. filled her pitcher, and came up. Mm -hmm. And the servant ran to meet her and mm -hmm. said, Please let me drink a little water mm -hmm. from your pitcher. Mm -hmm. So she said, mm -hmm. Drink, my lord. And then she quickly uh, left. Hold on. Look at her language, right? He, she did not know this man from Adam or Eve. But she was, and this was a beautiful woman. She had no reason to show respect, right? But she referred to somebody's slave as Lord. Even before finding out about the status of this man, before dispensing whatever um, respect, she did not. It appears that that is what she, that is who she was at heart. God. So she said, drink my Lord. Then she quickly let her picture down mm -hmm. on her hand mm -hmm. and gave him a drink. Mm -hmm. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, mm -hmm. I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Amen. Amen. Without being asked, she decided not to limit her hospitality to the human being, but also anticipate the needs of even animals. See, that's the kind of wife you need in your, in your home. That's the kind, the personality of a wife that will help you create a Christian home. She's able to anticipate. Let's move on. Um, if you have any questions, then you... Like Deborah, she must be courageous to fight the marital battle with her husband. Deborah was a judge in Israel at the point. Battle ensued. There were no men to lead the battle. She commandeered human resources for the battle. And it's interesting. Let's read Judges chapter uh, 4, verse 8 and 9. She called on a certain man, Barak. I don't know whether that's Barak. 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 And this command, commander says something very interesting. And I think it reflects in a marital situation. Let's read. If you are there. And Barak uh -huh. said to her, uh -huh. if you will go with me. Look at a soldier asking Deborah that the only condition that will lead him to enter this battle is if this woman went with him. What does it tell you about the power of a courageous man in a Christian home? You see? Huh? The woman. Backing. Backing my hand. The woman backing. The woman's backing, yes. I want to make that. You see, no matter, yes, you ladies should be smart to see beyond the facade we, the men show. Sometimes we, we are socialized to be men, but internally we are cowards, we are afraid. What gets us to move, what gets us to take an initiative is the voice we are hearing from behind. So this soldier is saying, if only you go with me, if only your wife would go with you, if, if only your wife would be with you, there is nothing you cannot do. There is no battle you cannot fight. There is no battle you cannot win. Sometimes the difference between the, 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 the wins we get in life is the women behind us pushing us. But if you're unlucky to find one who is always pushing you back and telling you what you cannot do, what would, what would mean you are dead? I know. <laughs> but what would mean? Verse 8. Then I will go. But if you will not go with me, mm -hmm. I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. She said, I will surely go with you. That is what every every man will want to hear. I will surely help you. I'm with you all the way. You can do it. I I saw a video on hey hey on on the social media when a guy was going for an interview and there's black woman. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Come. Assume I am whoever you want to assume. <laughs> That's what's here. 
Huh? So what's here? Yeah? Pardon me, come. <laughs> so, this guy was getting ready. And this wife, I'm assuming, the wife, was helping him dress up. And he was affirming him. I cannot find the, the exact word she used. But you are intelligent, you are, you are prepared, and speaking life into the... To, hey, with this kind of wife, what do you think this guy cannot achieve? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that interview, you cannot do. He cannot do. He cannot do. He cannot because. You can't afford to do. Is there something I'm not doing? I'm not <laughs> so, hey, and guys, I'm telling you, sometimes we look at the external, we are so uh, dumb. And I'm saying we are apart. We look at the movement of the the um, the mammalian glands, yeah. whether before or behind. That is what we consider, right? I don't know what you're saying. But another thing I've seen on the social media, I would say, who needs a keyboard, the biggest uh, character is my Enyaki. So those of you interested in being fit, I'm in our young mood. If 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 you are driving on high speed, typing big words, you don't need space bars. <laughs> uh, uh, that is there for them. It's a big space for them. But if you are using good, so let's not do, do not focus on the external. It's important. You cannot marry a woman you are not attracted to. But you see. We are attracted to the, the lady's head, mm -hmm. intelligence first. There is nothing more um, mm -hmm. So, so um, she must be courageous. She must have the capacity to encourage you when you are afraid. Because we get afraid often. Sometimes you want to embark on a project. You are not sure. And the reason the, why is this. Women have something men who don't have intuition. They are able to see far ahead. And so with their intuition, they are able to tell you what you can expect. You'll be fine. And I told you, a wife as your helpmate is like God in your life. And let me tell you something. I'm self-disclosing. So it means... Confidentiality is what? Shared. Uh -huh. I mean, but this is what I want to be one of them. So, Facebook, Facebook. Uh-huh. I'm going to show you my wife was watching. We have it now, okay? We have it now, okay? It's my name, huh? Yep. My name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, that is Deborah. Like, Hannah. She must be a prayer warrior who fights and wins her marital and family battles with prayer. We all know the story of Hannah, right? Hannah was married to, what's his name? El Karma. She was in a polygamous family. There was a second wife, Penina, right? And she was a very vindictive, cruel woman. It appears that the first century society uh, is not so different from ours, where child birth was a, a, a benchmark for, for marital success. Penina, the younger one, had two sons. Hannah, the older wife, was barren. And if, if Penina, as wicked as she was, I'm sure she has some Ghanaian blood. 
but now I realize that 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 move. I'm not ready. So, so. Uh -huh. From Jeffrey Afezi, mm -hmm. you say Frank Asian. So women have to be submissive, irrespective of the features of the husband. It's a question. Ah, uh, uh, Jeffrey. Oh, I know why you're asking this question. Well, who features now is our boy? If you open down to you, but why did you have so too little? If you have been young, 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 you on us that shrinks with time, you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. It shrinks with time. So if you focus on the time-bound features, well, because <laughs> you are not going to be like this. But there are certain things that grows and becomes enhanced with time. Eh? Intelligence, intellect, it grows, maturity. So focus on those things. So definitely, I'm uh, uh, irrespective of your height, your your weight. You must submit to him. Hate it is really hate it. Submission is not tied to any condition. I'm no, it's not. So now we're talking about Hannah and trying to get into the mind of Penina, the cruel rival. And so and and we learn that Hannah did not engage Penina in a verbal battle of who can insult the most, as many of us would be tempted to do. For her, she fought her battle in the temple. She spent time before God, and everything she wanted, everything she wanted to say, everything she wanted to get off her chest, every insult she turned into prayer. Instead of attacking her rival, she attacked who? And we know what happened, right? So what kind of wife would create a Christian home? The one who knows where the battle is fought. On her knees and not on her knees. Um, in our church, during communal worship, women are not supposed to pray. And so the effect is that you don't know whether they know how to pray or not, even on their own. And since you may not, how do you find out whether he, she knows how to pray? Not knowing, but whether she, she is prayer. That's what I'm looking for. Knowing how to pray and being prayerful are two different things. You don't only want your wife that knows how to pray. You want your wife that is prayer -yard. The, the blessing of having responsible men is that I not uh, please, my camera so don't see me as being biased uh, when I'm saying something. But the point is that one of the unintended consequences of having responsible fathers is that we tend to have pampered wives. Girls that have been pampered by their father, right? They've not had to pray for anything to come into their life. Because their father is essentially the God in the home. If they have a God, why pray? We may name Musa Mecca, but I want Mecca. So that is the challenge you must discover. Whether um, your wife knows how to fight the battle of life. Whether everything has not been handed to her. And, you know, like it said, females don't really... They are, they are crisis prayers, right? They pray when there is crisis. But you, you need to find one that has developed a habit of praying. And pray. So like Anna, she must be a prayer warrior. Listen, I have a question. Uh, uh, and where we read, like 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Yes. He said that for a woman to be like uh, a daughter of Sarah, mm -hmm. he said that you are, if you do good mm -hmm. and are not afraid mm -hmm. of any terror, what does that mean? 
If you do good without being afraid of terror. If you do good, mm -hmm. let me turn to that. Now, he who asks the question has the answer. What do you think? As of what I mean, ah, you have make a statement. We have turn it into a question. So go ahead. I give you the. You can. Yeah, you can say something. Say something. First Peter chapter three. Yeah, then My natural instinct tells me that on if you looked at the 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 verse alone, you may not get what you say. Now. Verse 5 says, for, this, for in this way, in former times, the holy women also, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves. And so he's referring to a certain kind of adornment. Okay? Um, being submissive to their own husbands. And so we can suggest that submission is one of the adornments that the women of old used. They dressed not with gold and silver, but they dressed showing submission. All right, verse 6. Thus, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right, without being frightened or... So you get the point. Doing the right thing can be frightening. Modeling the Christian way can be terrifying. Why? Because you would be placed on an island where you only find yourself. Not many people enjoy. Not many people are comfortable doing things the Bible way. So, from and ladies, don't you think? And I remember, you know, at a certain point in our church's history, wearing of trousers became a huge. And the reason why some females wanted to wear trousers was that they were afraid those wearing it would attract their husbands the more, and so they would lose them. Some women feel being submissive to your husband would mean that you are weak, empty-headed, and the fear of being described that way would want them to project a very uh, aggressive kind of antagonistic uh, posture. And so sometimes doing the, the right thing can be terrifying. And sometimes, even a man loving the wife is afraid that the wife may take care of all. So, that's what I'm saying and telling you. Loving and submitting, they are not, it's all of them are. Because it, it may come out along with some terrifying thoughts. And uh, I wanted to make another full of because he said, if I only become mm -hmm. a daughter mm -hmm. of Sarah, mm -hmm. if you're not afraid of that, that uh, fighting, mm -hmm. my question is, is my environment mm -hmm. not causing more fighting to us? Because they, if, if, you, if you, maybe you are an educated woman, mm -hmm. and you become so submissive, mm -hmm. what are those around us going to say? Last week, you brought up an issue of your husband, who was helping you take care of your kids. And you remember that issue? Even the people in the church were saying things that got the man to wonder, what am I doing wrong? So you are right. Sometimes we fail to do what is right because of what we are hearing, what the feedback we are going to get. And so if we value human thoughts and opinions more than we value God's thoughts and opinions, we are going to bow and control and submit. So it's, it's a reality. It's a challenge we face every day. And um, um, I've seen your hand, but there is something we call in, in social learning theory um, reciprocal determinism. Uh, <laughs> this, this idea suggests that there is nothing neutral in, in the world. You influence me, reciprocal determinism. The kind of person you become is, a result, is as a result of mutual influence. You know that fans influence their idols. You know that. And the, the idols and celebrities also influence their fans. So we live according to people's expectations in both ways. The kind of lessons you preach, the kind of demeanor you, 
is you do so because of the feedback you get from your church members. So we must know that. We must be aware. Sometimes we dress certain ways, not because that is how we originally we want to, but because of the feedback we are getting. Oh, shata, baby. Now, why are you? So, what men are saying? Shata, baby, and you see positive reinforcement. So, you would perpetrate that. That's, that's how it goes. So, um, fear of isolation, fear of ostracization lead us to do things that we don't want to do. That is what we call in common parlance fear. Fear. Yes, Moses. Yes. I see society as a big habit. So what keeps a society, uh, the society's identity is the reputation of a certain way of being cared for by the people of time. And what keeps that is all we call tradition, right? So, and what keeps the people in that particular society is people like us to do things like this. So, as long as you keep doing things that way, then you are considered a member. The moment there is a sense of. So, um, that is what is called conformity. So, the moment there is a sense of a uh, this or they say that one person is doing something different, then the person is now beginning to be touching the other. Yeah. And there's going to be an effort to pull you back yes. into the pool. Yes. And so, that particular resistance or that particular. Is what you are going to do when you are living the Christian life in society. Mm-hmm. So I think it is something that we should prepare ourselves for. So that when the talks come, we know that these are people who belong to this, and I am this. And when we know the difference, we'll be able to focus on them. And you see Jesus preparing the disciples for this kind of, um, they call it pushback. He says, If they hated me, your master, then a servant is not greater than his master. They are going to what? So Jesus was preparing the minds of the disciples for what we are discussing today. And so if the, the natural society is what you value, then you go according to it. But if the spiritual society is what is important to you, then you become the salt and the light of this. Alright. Moses. Yes, of course. Um, as you, you began by saying, if we decided to pick that particular verse in isolation, mm-hmm. probably we wouldn't get what Peter is trying to communicate. But uh, even in chapter 3, we began with in like manner. Mm-hmm. So, like he was saying in chapter 2, mm-hmm. in chapter 2, he was trying to draw the attention to the fact that um, we are not citizens of this particular earth, and that we have a place we are supposed to prepare ourselves for, mm-hmm. and that our Christ also died, he suffered and gave us an example to follow. Mm-hmm. So, based on that, he was trying to get them to submit. Mm-hmm. Like Christ submitted, mm-hmm. and when he was submitting, he suffered mm-hmm. and gave us an example. So, in like manner, the ladies also submitting, they are going to suffer. Mm-hmm. And if they have it in mind that they are the home they are preparing themselves for, and they are only pilgrims on this earth, then they would endure the pain and suffer. In some ways, we all suffer. Whoever wants to please God, we suffer. Uh, but I think that we have to be honest. I am not You see, these are because of internal dialogues, internal private thoughts. That goes on. You, you begin to imagine, you know, why women are married, we are. And that begins a whole journey in your mind. We all suffer. So, perceiving righteousness would not come easy. Yes. Come, and we should be ready for, for. That is why we go to heaven. To go and rest from all this uh, mental uh, torture we are going through here. Yes, Mr. Okay, um. Um, I think that our, our time is unfortunately the sound is still you'll be going. So this is Wakai. Yes. Spontaneous recovery. Um, you see, the, the kind of marriages we see today, mm-hmm. you realize that most of them are not working. Mm-hmm. And most of them are breaking down. Mm-hmm. So I thought at the time, before I got married, that there must be a better way 
community. And um, so if we are here, I think that we are fortunate enough to have this kind of discourse to discover a better way of making this thing work. Yeah, when is there, yes, sir, you know, the extent to which we are, we go through premarital counseling is very limited. We don't have to. Me, me and Mika say, I didn't, I didn't go through any counseling before getting married. And so my, my marriage is, is growing as a result of me teaching this. So now I am, I am trying to practice whatever I am also talking about. And so as I've said, the purpose of, for me and those of us who are leading the campus church is to create a new generation of transformed, equipped Christians. There are so many things you are learning, you are getting that those our predecessors did not get. We suggest that your life, your Christian life must be better. Your marriage must be better than you. So what we are trying to do here is, as Paul said, we don't want to shrink from telling you everything that you need to know. Not only about what we must believe, but also about how we must be. So that when belief and life are brought in sick, we become ready candidates for, for heaven. So, yeah, um, like the way Moisha and those girls are crafting their body, it tells you that nothing happens by accident. Whatever you want to have, you must be intentional. You can pray about a, a, a Christian marriage, but if you keep on having those those unspiritual, ungodly ideas, it will be a mirage. You must work at it. Learn how to say sorry. Learn how to say thank you. How do I do this? Then you'll be, you'll be, you'll be going um, up. And so let's take up this opportunity. At least, the warrior, I may that You cannot point to me. At least, I may, I may not have told you everything, but at least I've done my best. And I'm what? One car, I'm I've done. All right. I think we'll end here. Um, next week, we will we'll continue. Those of you who go home, you can follow us on Facebook. Um, Moses, let's get the YouTube channel. That's that's the request I'm getting. So we can uh, we can use that to reach others. So um, thank you for coming. I hope these words would make some meaning to you, and I hope you gather the courage and the humility to apply them in our marriages and in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for these words. I know my words are inadequate, but the Spirit is all sufficient. Pray that the Spirit will lead us, will sift these feeble words, and that your children would understand and begin to, to get the import of these, these ideas. Help us as we are married, as we are thinking of getting married, so that we are, we are individuals that would contribute to the creation of Christian homes. Father, we thank you for your son. Thank you for his death. Thank you for the church through which we have fellowship with you and one another. Our confidence of eternal salvation is because of Christ and the church. And in his name have we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
I will touch you. Imagine you went to your house and then your wife or your husband was not there. You went to your wife or your husband. It means our action today is highly contingent on our remembrance of certain things that happened in the past. As you are famous, first. I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord says, in the night in which he was betrayed to pray, and when he had given thanks, he took it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the blood that was shed on the cross to cover our sins. We pray that as we take this cup, we continue to remember the sacrifice your son made for us. And then we continue to also help us in the Take care of our responsibilities towards you as your sons and daughters. That the day that we might need to account for all the actions we have taken here will be a day.
blessing us and for reminding us to give back unto you. We are grateful for this money that you've given unto us. We thank you for making us stewards of your own. We pray that you continue to bless us, that day in day out you keep on reminding us that whatever we have in our possession belongs to you, and when need be, we will give back unto you. We pray that you keep on blessing us and you bless the church, you bless the resources you've given unto us, that we will use it to fulfill your own purpose. In Christ's name, I will pray with Amen. 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 Amen.
thank you for bringing us together and for allowing us a chance and giving us the opportunity to worship you. Many others wish that they could worship the way we do. But our neighbor, we are much privileged to have this opportunity. We thank you for your words of exaltation. Thank you for the servant to whom you gave us your words. Pray that you continue to bless him with more wisdom and more knowledge of you, so that he can deliver unto us words that would enable us to worship you and live our lives the way that you were for us. We also ask that in the course of our worship, if there is anything that we did wrong, we pray that you forgive us in Jesus' name. Continue to bless us even as we prepare to move away from this place. We're committing all those who are writing examinations as we can. Especially those in the house of faith. Our Father, you continue to grant us wisdom and insight into questions that we probably do not even understand. We know that you're capable because you did it for Daniel. When the king had his own dream in his own room, in his own palace. But who not remember? Father, you, you gave Daniel insight into the dream and the meaning to the we ask for such wisdom when we sit down to answer our examination questions. We also pray, committing all those who are doing their dissertations, their project work, their thesis unto you, that Father, you grant them wisdom so that they can complete that which they have said before them, so that in the end, we shall be cause to do We pray for strength, heavenly strength, to be able to put all these things that we are learning into practice. Father, these things are counterintuitive, they are countercultural, and so it becomes very difficult for us to sometimes accept and sometimes to do. We pray that by the Spirit, Father will be able to do these things. Take the Spirit not away from us. Even as we move away from here, we ask that you go with us. To come back here with us for this time of worship. We ask that you meet each and every one's here's need so that we can have the cause to give you what we have to do. Bless us. Let us be by the way. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for being with us throughout. Thank you especially for being our God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.